Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Anchored. Today, we are celebrating Christmas together. I'm here with Joe, our Next Gen Director in Prosser, and James, our Next Gen Director here in Bethel, Richland. We are so excited to be celebrating Christmas with you, and we have a couple fun stories and lessons to go over with you. Yeah, so as you know, we've been working through the nativity story. Um, right now, Jesus has been born, as we know, yeah. all right? Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, shepherds come to see him. Wise men come. They, they, they see Herod. All that happens. Wise men leave. And then Herod realizes he's been tricked. And that's kind of where we're picking up the, the story as now. This is Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. Yeah. It begins like this. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. That's a good angel voice. <laughs> That's right. You have to. I don't know how you sound. I can't imagine it's like, I just want you to rise and take the child and his mother. Are you listening to me, Joseph? Okay. <clears throat> rise. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. And remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all the region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be comforted because, uh, because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream... He withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. Nice. Wow. You know what I... Rise. It's so uncomfortable about that text. <laughs> What's yeah. uncomfortable about that text? I mean, so many things. <laughs> but it's the fact that it's a Christmas season, and there's this sense of, like, jolliness and joy and ridiculousness mm -hmm. and Christmas sweaters and Christmas jammies. And then we're reading about all kinds of babies dying. It just, I feel significantly underdressed. <laughs> yeah. So that's what makes me uncomfortable. It does. I mean, it's a very uncomfortable passage because, one, how can you even relate to this realistically? I mean, how could you even, uh, you know, put yourself in the shoes of anybody in this story? But I will tell you this. You can't. Oh, yeah. it, you can't. Yeah. But I will tell you this. I don't know if this is, I don't know why my brain works the way it does, but it reminded me, uh, I loved, I love road trips with my family. Um, mm -hmm. I was a weird kid. I loved it. Uh, it was me and my sister, my older sister, and then we had, I have a much younger sister. But even then, I loved it because when we all went on road trips, long distance, I'm like hours in the car. I loved it. I look forward to it. It's because in our vehicle, we can kind of like spread out. And we'd have our own little territory. Yeah. My sister would stay over there, and I would stay over here. Really paint me a picture. What kind of vehicle was this? Oh, dude, it was a Astro van. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> I loved it. It was, was the, 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 it was the 80s. It was crazy. No, no cell phones, no iPads, no DVD players. It was just the radio that you couldn't touch, and it was playing actual rock and roll, not classic rock and roll that hadn't been invented oh, yet. Yeah, nice. Uh, and but we, I don't even know what we did to entertain ourselves. I don't know if you, I don't know, you guys were born in the thousands. I don't know when you guys were. How dare you? I'm an 80s <laughs> child. <laughs> I don't know. I'm yeah, a 90s kid. Okay, there you go. Okay, we got got. We got got. But I did, and so I would crawl into the very, very back because no one wore a seatbelt in the 80s. Yeah, so I'd crawl into the very back of the Astro van, and I would sleep on the floor between the back bench and the door. I think that's called like the death zone. I think it's like if you got because <laughs> if you got rear-ended even slightly, that's where people died. That's where things got crushed. But I slept like a baby. I loved it. <laughs> and uh, and my, like my mom didn't even know where I was, and she could, she didn't care. It was the 80s. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful time. But one time I did. I slept there in the back, and after a while, we kind of got to our destination, and uh, I got up. And my face was like on fire. It was bright red and it felt like it was burning. 
And uh, my mom was freaking out. She didn't know what was happening. Like my clothes had been bleached. And we're like, dude, what is this? What happened? And it was because my uncle who used the, the, the van previously, he had put a car battery in the back <laughs> of the Astro van. All right. And it had leaked some and on this. And he had like, tried to clean it up, you yes. know, with like paper towels and wishes or something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so like, it's so, but you know, we're trying to figure out what was happening and trying to like wash my face. And I don't know why that is, but as difficult as that was, I still loved the road trips that I would take, even the chances of chaos. Like I love traveling with my family. Now I say that story even saying, because I, I was the child in that. You know, I wonder when Jesus grew up, I imagine he heard this story, but I imagine, I wonder if he thought, I wonder if the only thing he thought or remembered of this was how cool it was spending that much time with his parents and not the chaos that was happening in mm, Bethlehem. Yeah. Um, mm. But I loved it, man. I, I, some about traveling. It just it hit me. Traveling is fun. It yeah. can also be challenging. Like my, my only experience traveling as a dad has been with uh, a newborn. And oh, so the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's stressful. I, my first time traveling, I have this memory where we are pulled up in a gas station parking lot. There's not a bathroom for me to change his diaper. So I'm changing his diaper in the back. <laughs> they don't want to use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's uh, be real about this. <laughs> <laughs> if there was, it's not going to be much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm in the back seat trying to change his diaper. It's pouring rain on us. I'm getting soaked. He's screaming. Finally get his diaper changed, put him in the car. We take off and he just keeps yelling and screaming. And we just are like hoping and praying that he like sleeps so we can enjoy each other's company for part <laughs> of this car ride. And uh, and that was like a, what, a six hour car ride. I'm, I'm like wondering, Joseph is taking his wife and his newborn baby on this how long of a trip yeah. and how difficult and stressful that would be on top of having these guys coming after him, trying to kill him, an army running after trying to kill his baby. And I'm like, that would be insane. And there's so much stress. Yeah. And the responsibility of your newborn being the Christ, like yeah. your new, oh, yes. newborn being. Let's throw that on. <laughs> I, I love my kids. I love you, sweeties. But like, <laughs> you're no Jesus. But uh, to have like Jesus, to have that like changing Jesus's diapers or whatever. Whatever or they did. Yeah. Whatever it is they did. <laughs> But to change that on the road and, and to know that you have the responsibility of keeping the Christ safe. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. Crazy. I, I mean, I got some like just like normal change of diapers and screaming kids in the back. But when I think of Christmas, when I think of traveling, the, the memory that comes to mind for me is a few years ago. Let's see. Calvin was, I think, almost two. We, Lucas wasn't born yet. Haley's parents, who are, were living in California at the time, decided we're going to go like full white Christmas. And they rent a house in Hayden Lake. A mm. bunch of family comes up from California. And, and we all meet at this house for Winter <clears throat> Wonderland. As a bunch of Californians, it was very exciting yeah. to be around snow. Wow. <clears throat> so we're there for, I don't know, maybe 24 hours. Maybe we get there the 21st. The 22nd, a storm comes through, which we all thought was really fun. <laughs> Um, until the power went out <laughs> and uh, lights shut down. And, and then we learned something as Californians I didn't know that apparently when you live in a cold area, you need an electric pump to pump water into your house. Yeah. And, and so there was no running water then. There was no heat. Um, and so we started to freak out a little bit, not for the food because we just made an outside refrigerator and just like <laughs> stuck everything <laughs> a, a, on the deck outside. Um, but all, all these generators started turning on at the houses around us and we didn't have that. We had the propane mm -hmm. fireplace going, so that was on, but it wasn't like blowing hot air into it. So for the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, we were praying for a miracle and it didn't really happen. Most of the 25th, there was no power. There was no running water. There were, I think, 11 of us in the house. Golly, in man. order to use the bathroom, uh, you had to take a five-gallon bucket, walk oh, down to Hayden Lake, I you bust were, through the ice. I thought you were about to say you have to use the five-gallon. Like uh, oh, no. It was like you know, a there, little five-gallon bucket. There is a line, sir. Okay, okay, okay. I was making sure. Bust Eleven through the feet. ice, get like a, like a bucket of freezing cold ice water, bring it back to the house, and then just like, if you were kind, you left it there for the ladies. Um, you do your business. Did and the then ladies just... do that for you? <laughs> no. No. They did not. No. And then you would just flush with all of that. And it was kind of miserable. <laughs> uh, uh, like, 
uh, <laughs> Christmas fun. Eve, our gift to us is we rented a hotel room, not to stay in, but so that everyone could shower for the first time in three days. <laughs> and we just like <laughs> eleven of us rotated through the through the uh, hotel room, and and it was just so unexpected and so um out of control, and and like this fun memory of overcoming something difficult together. But the actual process was was not no. so much fun. That's what I think Hallmark movies do us to dis, do us a disservice because they they'll have a story like that, but it'll have like a nice shiny ending. Like Santa Claus will come in the end or save you, or like oh yeah, uh, a lumberjack you know is out to you know will come in. And, Christmas morn, the power the turns power. on and Santa's there. Wrong. Yeah, no, Wrong. yeah, and that doesn't happen. It's like this false sense of control it tries to give us, man. Hmm. Oh, good. So That's what I'm that. seeing a lot. Uh, I don't know for some reason. Uh, we've had a few things happen this season, and I'm just realizing more and more, and, and even in through this narrative, just the lack of control. Uh, like Joseph's got mm. no control. I mean, he he's given a message, which is wonderful, but he's got no control over Herod. He's got no control over you know what army is hunting him and his family and his yeah. newborn child. He's got no control over what's happening, and and I'm and I'm seeing in my life how much I love control mm. and how little I have. And how the assurance that scripture and that Christ brings is not the assurance of I have control and I get to choose what I'm going to do, but the assurance of the kingdom and the goodness of that. Mm. Um, in spite of loss, in spite of dreams dying, in spite of Hallmark not happening, like like the assurance is uh, the peace and the goodness and the hope of Christ, not the assurance that it goes my way. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just it's just hit me different this season. So I love cool. that in this narrative. Yes. It's such a beautiful thing. And I feel like you get to see some of that in the stories that you tell. That there, there's brokenness and there's pain, uh, but you can look and see Christ in the brokenness and the pain. And I think looking back on our stories of Christmas and traveling, and as, as we all look at stories of Christmas and traveling and all of these things in our lives, we can reflect on who Jesus is in our life and in this holiday of Christmas as we celebrate him coming to earth and seeing what are the stories of your past? What are the stories of your traditions? And sharing those with our families, sharing those with our kids and inviting them into our stories, inviting them into the redemptive power of Jesus in our lives. And so that's the challenge that we have is what would those stories be for you? What are stories that you want to share with your kids? And take some time today and tomorrow and share those stories with your kids as we celebrate this awesome holiday of Jesus coming to earth. Yeah. Yeah. And, and take a chance. Be vulnerable with your family, with your kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, share with them maybe some trials and struggles. Yeah. Uh, you know, prayer, which we're about to do. Prayer is this ultimate act of vulnerability that we have before God, where we lay before him our heart, our desires, our struggles, our tears, our victories, our mistakes. And we get to share because he knows. Um, and so it, it's incredible. And those, you know, if you have kids or if you have mm -hmm. young ones in your house, you know, it's amazing uh, being prayerful, being vulnerable around them. And that when your kids hear your prayers, they get to see inside you the things that you desire, the things that you want. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's just a powerful thing to do. Um, so I'm just going to, I want us to pray. Um, this is, you know, a prayer for your family. This is a prayer uh, for Joseph and Mary. Uh, this is a prayer for us all. And so I just want to read this to you. Um, as we kind of close out this, this kind of, this message. Heavenly Father, your son, Jesus, is our greatest gift, uh, is your greatest gift to us, a great sign of your love. Guide us as we strive to walk in that love together as a family this Advent. As we prepare our hearts for Christmas, bring us closer to each other and to your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.